The Teachings of the Bhagavad Gita Chapter 4, Path of Knowledge In this chapter, Lord Krishna reveals deeper insights to Arjuna, explaining the concept of knowledge that has been passed down through generations. Krishna emphasizes that he has taken many births to uphold Dharma and guide humanity. He introduces the idea of the eternal nature of wisdom and the path of knowledge, Jnana Yoga. Krishna clarifies that there are different paths to realization, but ultimately they all lead to the same truth. He imparts knowledge about the cycle of birth and rebirth, samsara, and the role of actions in this cycle. He emphasizes the importance of performing one's duty as a means to spiritual realization. In Chapter 4 of the Bhagavad Gita, titled Path of Knowledge, Lord Krishna imparts several important teachings to Arjuna. He emphasizes the eternal nature of wisdom, explaining that he has incarnated multiple times to uphold righteousness and guide humanity. He introduces the concept of the path of knowledge, Jnana Yoga, as one of the ways to reach realization. Krishna clarifies that although there are various paths, they all ultimately lead to the same truth. Krishna discusses the cycle of birth and rebirth, samsara, and how actions are intertwined with this cycle. He highlights the significance of performing one's duty without attachment to the results, which serves as a means to spiritual realization. This chapter provides insights into the philosophical and ethical aspects of life, guiding individuals on their journey towards self-discovery and spiritual growth. Chapter 5, Path of Renunciation Krishna continues to explain various paths to spiritual growth and introduces the path of renunciation, Sannyasa Yoga. He clarifies that both renunciation and selfless action can lead to the same goal of liberation, but the path of selfless action is generally more suitable for those active in the world. Krishna reiterates that true renunciation is not just about giving up external actions, but about renouncing attachment to the results of actions. He explains that a person who has mastered their mind and senses, and is unaffected by pleasure and pain, is truly renounced. The chapter emphasizes the unity of paths and the importance of inner detachment. From Chapter 5, Path of Renunciation in the Bhagavad Gita, we can learn several important lessons. One Paths to Spiritual Growth, Krishna discusses different paths to spiritual growth, highlighting the path of renunciation, sannyasa yoga, as one of them. This teaches us that there are multiple ways to attain spiritual realization and liberation. 2. Renunciation vs. Selfless action, Krishna explains that both renunciation and selfless action can lead to liberation. This teaches us that the pursuit of spiritual growth can be tailored to an individual's temperament and circumstances. Renunciation might be suitable for those seeking solitude and intense introspection, while selfless action might be more appropriate for those engaged in worldly responsibilities. 3. True Renunciation, Krishna clarifies that true renunciation goes beyond external actions. It's not merely about giving up external possessions or responsibilities, but about relinquishing attachment to the results of actions. This teaches us that true spiritual growth involves an internal shift in mindset rather than just outward actions. For mastery of mind and senses, Krishna emphasizes that a person who has mastery over their mind and senses is truly renounced. This teaches us the importance of self-control, discipline, and managing our desires in the pursuit of spiritual growth. 5. Detachment from pleasure and pain Krishna mentions that being unaffected by pleasure and pain is a sign of genuine renunciation. This teaches us that true spiritual growth requires us to transcend the dualities of life and develop equanimity. 6. Unity of Paths The chapter underscores the unity of paths to spiritual growth. Whether through renunciation or selfless action, the ultimate goal is the same. 
This teaches us that diverse spiritual practices can converge towards a common realization. 7. Importance of Inner Detachment The chapter emphasizes the significance of inner detachment. This teaches us that while outward actions might continue, inner attachment to outcomes should be relinquished for true spiritual progress. Overall, Chapter 5 of the Bhagavad Gita teaches us about the nuanced nature of spiritual growth, the need for inner transformation, and the value of adapting one's approach based on their disposition and circumstances. Chapter 6, Path of Meditation This chapter delves into the practice of meditation, Dhyana Yoga. Krishna teaches Arjuna about the process of controlling the restless mind through disciplined meditation. He explains the importance of a tranquil mind and the methods to achieve it. Krishna describes the qualities and conditions necessary for successful meditation, including a quiet place, a clean body, and moderation in eating and other activities. He introduces the idea of focusing the mind on a single point, dharana, and merging with the object of meditation, dhyana. Krishna acknowledges that controlling the mind is challenging but achievable through regular practice and detachment from desires. He assures Arjuna that with determination and practice, the mind can be tamed, leading to self-realization. These chapters delve deeper into the different paths of spiritual growth and provide insights into the practices of knowledge, renunciation, and meditation. They emphasize the importance of self-discipline, detachment, and self-awareness as crucial elements on the path to spiritual enlightenment. Chapter 6 of the Bhagavad Gita, known as the Path of Meditation, offers teachings on the practice of meditation, Dhyana Yoga. Krishna guides Arjuna on how to control the restless mind through disciplined meditation. The chapter emphasizes the significance of a calm mind and provides methods to attain it. Krishna discusses the prerequisites for successful meditation, including a peaceful environment, a clean body, and moderation in daily activities. He introduces concepts like focusing the mind on a single point, dharana, and merging with the meditation object, dhyana. Krishna acknowledges the difficulty of controlling the mind but highlights that regular practice and detachment from desires can make it achievable. He reassures Arjuna that with determination and practice, the mind can be disciplined, leading to self-realization. These teachings in Chapter 6 highlight various paths of spiritual growth and offer insights into practices involving knowledge, renunciation, and meditation. The importance of self-discipline, detachment, and self-awareness are emphasized as essential components on the journey toward spiritual enlightenment.